All right. Hey, everybody. I hope all the audio levels are right here. Um, welcome to the stream of building this Typer Active wireless corn. How's everyone doing today? So, um, the wireless corn is something that I've actually been working on for a pretty long time now. Um, and I'm super excited that we finally have it released. Uh, the, the big feature of this PCB on its own is that all the service mount components are already installed for you. So you can see here, we've got like a power switch, reset button, battery jack, got to make sure that this is all wireless compatible. And then the backside, you have all of your diodes and hot top sockets already installed. So all that is pre-installed for you at what I would consider a pretty reasonable price. Um, you're barely paying a premium over a kit that you'd have to assemble yourself. Um, I also spent quite a, a good amount of time having some nice traces on here so you can see the cool traces and stuff. Um, so that's what these uh, PCBs kind of all about. Um, they also, we sell the option of having a 3D printed case. So you can see here, there's a cyan one. Um, it's pretty bright under these lights, but it's a pretty fun color. I think a lot of people like it, but we have a lot of other colors like black and stuff like that. So, um, but yeah, this is like everything that you need to, to build a kit. And yes, I am building with the new easy solder sockets they are called. So. In the past, um, if you guys have ever built a keyboard and you probably built it with a nice nano, then you likely use these taller sockets and then these Milmax pins. And the Milmax pins and sockets are great for, you know, making your nice nano hot swap. But those loose pins are often a pain to deal with in terms of having them get pushed down into the socket, it requires quite a bit of pressure and you gotta make sure that you don't squish them. So I was able to source these sockets and, and headers that when stacked together are just a little bit taller than your Milmax variants. So this makes it so that the soldering job is a lot easier. They're a little bit more expensive because they are harder to get and are a little bit more expensive to source, but I think they're a worthwhile upgrade for those who don't wanna deal with those pins. Um, so I, I think for any of those who have not seen a uh, I've seen this wireless corn before I want to show you one of the really cool things that comes along with this new release um, so if we take a look here we can see that on our website we have a um, the, the page called the build page and the build page lets you build your wireless corn so how this starts is you select your layout um, right now, I'm just going to build the one that we're building today. So, for example, you can either get the corn or the corn five column. We're going to go with the corn. Then we're going to select our switch type. In this case, we're going to do chalk. And then we're going to go ahead and configure it. And you can see right off the bat, we have this cool image of this. And this actually isn't just a 2D image. If I turn this a little bit, you can see this is fully 3D running in the browser. And you can see everything about this PCB right in front of your eyes. And then on the right side, you can see all these configuration options for what you want to have with your corn. So for example, for this uh, one we're building today, we're gonna be building this with a uh, cyan case. So we're gonna add that. You can see right there, the cyan case was added. And then we're gonna go down and choose some clear acrylic covers. You can see there, the light shines on those clear acrylic covers. You can see them there. Um, and then going on to batteries, we're gonna add some batteries. Uh, today we're gonna be using our easy solder hot swap sockets. So we'll add those on. We have nice nanos. We're gonna have nice views. We had a couple left over in our uh, extra stock for um, replacements and such like that. So while they are out of stock on our store, they're coming soon in the future. And today we're gonna be building with them. So we'll have those on. And then uh, we're gonna be building with pink switches and then black MBK. You can see basically this is your keyboard built entirely what it will look like when it's done. So hopefully when I'm done building this, it's going to look a little bit like this. Um, and then of course you can add it to your cart. So for example, if I take off 
It's a nice view because you can't add to cart with something that's out of stock. You can see it then adds everything to your cart. Uh, you can see right here. Um, my cart was actually already full of ones. So this is two kits. It's not actually that expensive as you can see. Um, and then you can see some other information. Um, behind me you can see this actually qualifies for free shipping on Typeractive and Typeractive will donate uh, 1% or a dollar from your order to support open source. So that's kind of what this kit is all about and what it offers. So I think it's time to just get in and build in it. So let's go back to here. All right. So the first thing that you have to do when you build this kit is get the hot swap socket soldered on. So I'm going to clear out some of the stuff over here. We don't really need the case. I'll set this over here. Don't really need keycap switches. Just the PCBs, our hot swaps, and then our nice nanos. Let's get all that in now. Second here. Um, and I'll set this all this aside. Cool. All right, so we got our nice nanos, and then our sockets here. So awesome. Got everything that we need. We can pop open one of these hot swap sockets kits, and let me zoom in here. We can see what's included here. We've got a socket. It's a little bit lower profile than your usual Milmax. And then you've got these headers that are also a little bit lower than your normal headers. And because they're both lower, when you add them together, they're just a little bit taller than those old uh, Milmax hot swaps. So first what we're gonna do is just slot this into this PCB. And slot the other one into the other side. There we go. See, they're just slotted in there. I'm gonna tape them down for my life here. It's much harder to solder things when you can't look over the top of them on stream. So I'm just gonna do a quick little tape job here. That's gonna let me make sure that they stay in place when I go ahead and solder them. So there we go, they're popping out on that side. I'm gonna go ahead and fix this up over here. Got my Fume extractor, it's kind of jank, but it does the job. We're going to plug this in here. It's going to get going here. You can feel that. <clears throat> Avinu, are there good resources for designing manufacturing a PCB for the Nice Nano? You want a 5x12 ortho, the ones I found won't ship to the UK. Uh, in terms of resources for, for doing something like that, um, AI03's guide is really great for just general PCB design. Um, there's also a guide, or I, I guess uh, a written up guide by eBassler, or I'm not sure exactly how to explain that, or say, say his name, but he has a wireless guide that goes more in depth on how to do charging and things like that. You don't really need that for the Nice Nano. Generally for designing with the Nice Nano, you just do a normal build with a PCB. So AI03's guide will be plenty. Um, Outside of that, I don't have a lot of resources off the top of my head, but uh, let's get into soldering this. I also, of course, will be using some Typeractive Kester solder. So this is some of the best solder out there, and we'll be using it here. Got my pine sole, and uh, we'll be plugging this into here. All right, sweet. out some of this and then what we can do is just press this button it will heat up you can see how fast that heats up it's already heated up to our temperature that we need I'm just gonna move this over here there we go we got our first joint there the V2 is in fact green.
Let me tell you, it's much harder to solder things when you uh, can't look at them closely, but I'm doing my best here. Hey, that just means that if I can do it this, like this, you guys can do it when you can actually look at it closer. And yeah, this, this solder is just super awesome. Like, it just works super great. Solder like this is just so nice. You don't realize that you're missing it, missing it until you have it. It melts so easily. I had some old stuff that I used from Amazon for a really long time, and I'm really glad that I finally switched to caster solder. All right. All right, there's one side. I'm just gonna take a look at that to make sure I've done that well. A little bit of a sloppy job there, but it will do. That's another nice thing about these sockets. They're a little bit more forgiving than the other ones. So I should be totally fine. I'll keep going on this. And now that I have these kind of locked into place, I'm going to take this tape off so I can get in here. There we go. Tape is off. Um, all right. What was the tape for? So the tape I used just because normally when I do this, I'll have it up close to my face like here and then just solder one of them in to hold it in place. And then I'll just go ahead and do the rest because it's already locked in place. But when I'm like this, it's really hard to hold them in place. So I just taped it down so it's easier to solder the, the beginning part there. Um, the tape is also just easier generally. I would recommend it. I have not considered doing ASMR, but thanks for letting me know. Um, but yeah, you can see here, these are really low profile sockets for, for this. They're not the lowest, but they're they're pretty dang low. And then um, here we go. Got our headers that we need to put in. So I'll grab a nice nano, rip it open. And you can see it comes with these right here, these um, these square post headers. These are included because it's just standard practice to, to include these with any kind of microcontroller uh, to make sure that you can get it going. However, I would not recommend using these just because then uh, once you solder your nice nano, it's locked in and then you can't remove it very easily if you need to debug anything, replace things, if you want to move your nice nano to another build or something like that. So I would recommend not using these. They are available. If you're on a budget, you can use them, but that is what why these are included and also why I will not be using them today. So throw them back in here. So we got these again. I know it was. I'm not putting it into here first. Let me go ahead and do that. Throw this into here first. Put the hot swap socket in here first. There we go. Now we're on to something. So what you want to do, put this in here like this, right? Then put the other one in here like this. So there we go. Got these in here.
There we go. Awesome. Now we got these stacked here. The stream nerves got to me, guys. Hey, guys, I'm so sorry. I apologize for those two mistakes here. <laughs> so, there we go. We got those in. Then you flip the nice nano over. And magically, now it's installed the right way because I'm actually paid attention. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. And yeah, yogurt, the, the main thing was that native USB. All right. And yeah, the other nice thing about these other soldering, or I guess, sorry, hot swap sockets is that the, uh, you don't have to worry about solder seeping through these pins into the, the bottom and, and kind of, I guess, well, fusing the sockets and the pins. So that's, that's a nice thing about this for sure. All right, awesome. I think we have to pull off some movie magic here in the re-upload where I already have this one done and, and go doing the, the right half the correct way. <laughs> That's pretty funny. Okay. All right. Yeah, this is much easier this way. That's for sure. Cool, got that, got that. And no. All right, first nano is all installed. You can see there. It is fully installed. We've got the hot swap. If I pull a battery out here just for a second to, to show this off. Um, you can see this slots right under here. And what we'll do is we'll first pry this out. Um, so what I like to do is take something that has a flat end. My favorite is to take this guy right here and use this end and then slowly pry on each side. So we'll pry on this side, then we'll pry on this side. Okay, well, that went quick. There we go. Then, because I pried it out so quickly, I have to bend this guy back a little bit. There we go, all good. Beautiful. So there we go. And I was out. All socketed, clean. And this is all good here too. So what I'm going to do is um, install the nice view now. So how I'm going to do that is take the uh, nice view I've got here. Open this guy up. And there we go. Got the nice view here. Put this into here. See it lines up right there. Got to make sure it's all straight. I'm going to flip it over here. I'm just going to solder really quick here. Okay. Okay. Before I do the rest, I like to make sure that's still straight. I'm looking at it straight on. You can see that that header right there is still straight. Bring it back down. Solder the rest. Okay. 
Okay. Okay, awesome. Got that. Now we got the socket in there. We can now install this guy. So you're going to want to put the short end up here. See it like that. Then once again, you're going to want to do this. Put it over here. I solder one pad. So I'm going to solder this one over here. Okay. Then I like to heat it up and make sure that it's straight. So I rock it back and forth until that's straight. Okay, I'm gonna rock it again a little bit. Then we can tell that's a 90 degree angle right there. So I can finish up the rest of these. Okay. Looking good. Got that all installed. So now that we've got that, we can go ahead and install this into here. How's it going? So we put our battery in like that, just like this. Have the, the cable coming out this side. I'm gonna turn it off so it doesn't do anything crazy while we plug everything in. Plug this jack in, line it up, push that in. There we go, battery's installed. Then what we do is we install the nice nano. So I'll drop this guy in. Let's make sure that that's installed correctly. Push it down. There we go. Battery, nice nano installed. If I turn this on, let's see, does it light up? Yep. So. So you can see that the lights on, so everything's all powered correctly. Yeah, I did design the nice nano. Um, and the the battery jack leads are a little too long, so I just kind of crush them together a little bit like this. Not too hard. You don't want to do anything too crazy, but just kind of push them, massage them into the right area so that we got some space along this edge here. And then you can slot in the nice view. So put that right on top. And just like that, we have a nice happy sandwich of. Um, Battery, nice nano, nice view. It's a nice little sandwich. Very clean. Battery's in there. Everything's looking all good. Our first have is done in terms of all of the wiring. So now what I'm going to go ahead and do is do the other side. And this time we're not going to mess it up. Okay, so when you start installing your side, you first are going to want to do the hot swap sockets. So I'm going to grab these and tape them in down here. So slide that in there, slide that in there. I'll grab some tape wherever I put it. Where did I put you tape? Oh, right here. Okay, sweet. Got that tape. Stick it down. Awesome. Okay. Have I thought about putting out an I squared C version of the uh, NICU? It's not really conceivable, or I guess possible to do that. The display that's that's using it, its driver is just an SPI driver, so that's why it's SPI. Um, I really want it to be I squared C, but to do it, it required a lot of extra components and it would have been more power, like let's try less power efficient. And honestly, it probably just would have been uh, way more expensive to, to handle that. Okay. Batteries don't have, I have, don't have connectors. How can I buy them and attach the connectors easily? Um, yeah, you can solder a JST connector on um, definitely something that um, a lot of people internationally are gonna have to do because we don't sell batteries. So you have to look into that. Um, let me know if you have any problems, but um, for these, it's it's really easy to install these ones. But yeah, feel free to ask in the Discord. We're happy to help there. 
So, okay, let me get these attached. So when you're installing these sockets, you first want to um, get each corner heated up and soldered. So there we go. Got that first one. Second. Third. And fourth. And then I'm going to go ahead and remove the tape. There we go. Tape's out. These are solidly in there. They're not going anywhere. Uh, so then I'm going to go ahead and solder the rest of these. Let me step this back up. Okay. So we just go down the line here. Awesome, got that. Just going down the line, soldering each of these in. If you finish building this, are you free to provide some troubleshooting pointers for a nice Nano V2 dropping connection constantly? Uh. Yeah, uh, feel free to, to reach out about that. It's likely something that you're gonna have to do on the ZMK, the ZMK side of things or on your computer. Um, generally, it's one of those two things that, that need to be changed. Okay. Soldering each of these in. Let me double check my soldering joints from up close. Definitely not the best joints in the world, but they'll service. So you can see here, we've got those joints all happily in there. Now I've got our sockets here, resting nicely, waiting for a nice nano. So as I stated before, you take these um, headers, you're going to slot them into here. So I'm just going to line this up. And just, I'm pushing down from the metal side of things, not the top, because I don't want to get poked in the hand with them. And then you just push down on these plastic and metal parts that are sticking up. And I'll just push down on each side. Push, push, push. And then you can kind of see right there. Got that now slotted in. So I'll just do the same on the other side. I installed this wrong wrong. Pop this back out. Make sure that you actually get all 12 in to the 12. So let me do that again. There we go. Got that one and popped right in there. And there you can see. Got them all set up. Grab your nice nano. So you don't need those square post headers. Those are if you're not doing hot swaps and the hot swaps are highly recommended. Grab this. Then what you're gonna to wanna to do is make sure that you have the nice nano face down. As you can see here, place my controller face down. Lay that on top. And make sure that you have them all properly set. You can see here I actually messed up. Do not put them up here. Make sure that you have them all the way to the bottom. So you can see here got that last one in and these top ones are not they don't have any headers in them these top ones are for installing a battery manually we're not doing that so we got that all set up now we just go down the line soldering this nice nano in
I'm just trying to clean up a little extra solder there. Okay. So I'm just going down the line here, making sure that we got this, these fumes being, are being extracted. It's something that you want to definitely be partially aware of. Yes, so yogurt's totally right. You're only going to use those if you're not hot swapping. Um, it's something that's just included with all microcontrollers to make sure that um, if you, you can saw it at least some way. But generally, I wouldn't rec that, recommend them for a keyboard build like this, just because it makes debugging harder um, to deal with, for sure. Okay, cool. So got that all done here. Go to the other side. Done. The soldering iron is the uh, pine sole. We sell it on the Type Reactive store, and um, yeah, it's um, really great soldering iron. It's pretty inexpensive. I've been a pretty big fan of it so far. I might get some new tips for it, but other than that, I've been really happy with it. So yeah, let me show you how it's being hot swapped. So it's soldered on, on both sides, right? But the hot swap part of it is that you have headers and sockets, right? So once you take, you can now take this nice nano out and it's separate. That's how it's hot swap. Um, and I usually do 300 degrees for the whole build. I wouldn't go higher than 300 if you can all avoid it, but 300 should be safe for most components as long as you're not holding it too long. Um, yeah, okay. so. Now that you have this in here, we need to install our battery in nice view. So what I'm gonna do is take a flat end of something and slowly pry this out. So over here, pry this loose a little bit. Okay, go to the other side and pry it out a little bit over here. Back over here. Ooh, these ones like to pop out pretty quick, but you'll see if you pop it out a little too quickly, you'll have these end ones a little bent. You can just bend them back. So I'll just take these tweezers and bend them back so they're straight. So I'll just bend them slightly. There you can see we're all good and straight. Perfect. Awesome. There, we got that. We got these. We're going to put our other nice view in. So, got our other nice view here. I'm going to open that up. Yeah, 300 degrees is definitely like the highest you want to go, but it makes things a lot quicker for me personally for heating up the solder. Um, a lot, some people were, I, I was talking to were soldering at like crazy high temps, like 350, almost 400, something like that. And I was like, geez, that's, you're going to just start to destroy things like that. So I wouldn't go any higher than 300. Um, you know, obviously with um, unleaded solder, it's a little bit harder to do that. But if you can all avoid it, I would recommend not doing that. go make sure that's in there okay got that nice view suck it in there now I just need to solder it set it like this do this of that so I'm just gonna solder one of these in the end make sure it's still straight looks straight to me um, 
and then go through and do the rest. Yeah, so that's the thing, is with leaded solder, 300's great, it melts super quick, and you're off to the races. Like, you can see how great this just melts and goes, I'm done. Um, but I understand with unleaded solder, that can't always be the case, in which case you might have to do a little bit higher, but um, I would definitely try to do the lowest you can where it will, will melt your solder. So there we go, we got the nice few socket in. So now let's put these headers in there. The short side's gonna go up into the nice view. There we go, we can see that. Set it like this. I'm just gonna solder one pin of these. Okay. Now obviously it's pretty bent like this. So then what I do is I reheat it. Just make sure it's straight. There we go. After reheating and kind of moving around on the table, you can see now it's straight. So then we can do the rest of these. Okay. Awesome. So now that we've got that all out of the way, got our nice view ready, got our Nice nano ready. We can then take a battery. Got, open this up. Um, with your version of the PCV, would it be possible to use a bigger battery and connect the power strip switch? It could be possible. You'd probably need to have a bigger battery like on the bottom with a different type of case than what we're using. And then feed the, the battery connector around here or maybe even connect it up here. It's definitely possible, but not what this is designed to use. It's got our battery. Uh, got the connector here. We can plug it in here. Um, you can see, we gotta make sure this is off while we're doing this, just so that the battery's not connected and things don't go crazy while we're connecting it for the first time. Ugh. If I can get it lined up. There we go. So you just got that lined up and then you push it in. And there we can see. It's all connected and good. And then I like to put that like that. Cool. So got that here. Got to make sure that that, there we go. So there we go, we got that. Put the nice nano over the top of the battery. Make sure that you've got them all lined up. And then you just push down. There we go. Nice nano installed, battery installed. Push these um, battery leads out of the way a little bit. Again, just kind of massage them into position. They're a little bit too long, but that's just because of tolerances for battery connectors. You can't make them exactly the right length without maybe having them too short, and too short is not good. So then we slot our nice view in. Yep, like that. There we go. The nice view is in. So now that you have everything sandwiched together, you have your beautiful um, battery, nano, nice view right here. Can you show how the USB lies above it? They touch a bit, I guess. Yes, they touch a little bit, just a little bit there. Um, but that sandwich there, that's perfect. Got all of this ready to go. And then you want to do the exact same thing on your left half, as I've already done here. So. Now we've kind of got, we've got our two halves here. We are entirely done with soldering. Um, and now it's time to, to do the rest of this. So I'm going to unplug my trusty fume extractor. Um, move this in here. Let me zoom out a little bit for this. My daily driver is not actually uh, a corn. I am more of a Lily 58 guy, um, and we'll be working on getting a Lily 58 out to everyone um, in the next few months here. So I'm definitely working on that because I'm a huge Lily 58 fan. I love my number row. But yeah, okay. So the next step of this that I like to do is start to um, put in all the switches into the plate and PCB. 
there we go. Got that. That goes there. So that goes here. The client today has selected pink switches. Look at that. I'm just gonna unload these in here. Um, actually, you know what? First, let's do the covers, the display covers. This is often sometimes easier to do. You can do it either way. You can either do switches and then these, or you can do the display covers first. Display covers first might be a little bit easier to install your hardware into here. So let me grab my screwdriver. Cool. So when you're given this, you're given your two covers right here. And then you're also given these. So you, when you have your nice view, then the nice views come in. They actually have a protective coating on them, or sorry, a protector, like a, a screen protector, like you have on like a phone when you get that. So it's the same thing that we're gonna have to take this off. I'm gonna take this off right after we put these in. Do I use ch uh, chalk switches on my main board? Yes, I on my Lily 58 I use chalk switches. I'm a pretty big fan of chalk switches, honestly. They're it feels nice to have your hands closer to the table, I guess. Um, but yeah, the, the the pink switches are not for everyone. I'll definitely do that as a warning. They're pretty light, so I would recommend only doing them if you're uh, pretty comfortable with light keyboards. So you'll see here um, the hardware that you get. If you can see that all here, you get some. Uh, M2 by 10 millimeter standoffs, and then you get nine screws, uh, one extra in case you lose it. So what you're going to do, I like to do this to start off the standoff, is I kind of just push a screw through, and then I take my standoff and I get it started by just screwing it on with my hand. There we go, got one standoff in. You need the other one. There we go. And you can kind of see, if you notice, these standoffs are the perfect height to get over that nice view. So, got that all installed, tightened in. And we're going to go ahead and do the other, same thing on the other half. Ooh. The display hot swappable too, yeah. So the sockets and pins that are included with the the nice view do the exact same thing. Um, if you notice when I installed that, I just kind of pushed it in. You can pull it right back out. So um, you can see here if I pull this out, it comes right out, and then yeah, the nice view is out. Um, and you can buy more of these sockets to put in other keyboards if you want to move your nice view around as well. Um, yeah, there we go. Let's see. There we go. Yeah. Okay. So there we got our standoffs on. Then for now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to peel off the back side of this. So you just take your fingernail, try to get hold of that paper. This paper backing is used to make sure that it's protected in transit to you. Um, so we get that. There we go. So I'm just going to leave it on the top for now to peel off later. I'll put that down there. So before I put the, the cover on, the display cover on, I'm going to go ahead and peel off the protective um, film on here. So just go ahead and run your finger along that edge. There we go, screen protector off. Put this on top. Put the screw in. Actually, sorry, before I put the screw in, I do need now to take this off. So go ahead and take off the other side of these. There we go. Put this on top. Put a screw in there. Screw that in. I'm not going to tighten it all the way. And now I can put the other one in on the other side. <clears throat> now 
I just want to make sure it's all lined up. So I'm just going to look at this kind of straight on and shift it around a little bit. Got that good. Tighten these both up. There we go. Got that all nice and protected. Yeah, it's not a big deal if you don't take off your, your nice view protective thing. It's not going to hurt anything. It's just something that it's good to do. Is there an API framework that would help me easily display custom data on the nice view? Uh, weather based on data pulled from the internet. Um, I don't know if there's a way to do that right now. That would definitely be a ZMK firmware type of thing. There's definitely some really cool widget stuff that you can do using uh, what, what ZMK has, but that's going to require a lot of other work to get information from the internet. <clears throat> okay, so now we're going to do the exact same thing on the other side. So I'll just peel these off. Off there, flip it over. There we go. Peel that off. Set that on top. Get our screw in there. Okay, cool. And then screw this bad boy in. Okay. There, got that one done. Other screw in. There we go. So now you can see we got these both, these halves in. Got that nice sandwich going. Acrylic is on, looking shiny. Extra screw we can set aside. Now it's time to get these switch plates installed. So what I like to do to get them started is plug in a few of these switches into the switch plate. So when you do this, you're just going to want to make sure that the um, there's like a little divot on the bottom of this. I don't know if you can see that right there. You want to make sure that that's facing down. So down and down. And just slot that in. There we go. We got one in. I'm just going to put like three or four or five in before I start putting them into the, the hot. Yeah, there's no foam in, th foam in this. Um, the foam, uh, a lot of people like it for, for sand sound dampening and other, other things, but there's no foam in this. I don't know if it affects corn keyboards that much. Um, how are the ProRed chalks and compared to pinks and blues? ProReds are a little bit heavier. They're one of the most popular switches by far. I think a lot of people really like the in-between feel of it, I guess, if you want to call it that. Um, so that's highly recommended. Anyways, as I was saying, you can see once you get like five or so switches in here, um, you can put more in if you want. That's, that's totally cool. I'm just going to make sure all the pins are straight. Um, so if I'm just going to look at them head on. And they all look to be straight, in fact. So I can then put it into here and just kind of slide, or I guess squish, these in to the PCB. And just like that, we now have five switches in to the keyboard. So let's go ahead and do the rest of them. Like some blues and reds and now some pro reds. Like you said, a middle ground. Yeah, definitely a middle ground. Um, this also seems to be one of the, uh, definitely one of the more popular ones. I'm gonna lower this a little bit. All right, there we go. So, just work and just slide each one of these in. Sometimes on the edge ones, they don't like to get clipped into the plate, so you can put your fingernail in between these two and pop it up, so now you can see it's all good there. <clears throat> yeah, 
if it doesn't like to clip in, sometimes I'll also put in my tweezers just to like kind of force it up a little bit. Um. Cool, so let's put this back into here. Sounds like things are breaking when I do that, it's kind of funny. Just all the cracking and clacking, getting things, these things in there. Keeps played up, dust out. Very true, very true. I mean, definitely foam is something we can look into, um, but um, I don't find it too necessary for, for my use case, but definitely it's it's an option that would be pretty cool. I think especially it can be helpful for ones that don't have a case because there's then the sides are totally wide open. In this case, with the case that we're using, it shouldn't be as big of a deal with the um, case like this, so. Keep on sli sliding these in here. Cool. Just got two left on this side. There we go. Switches are in. Yeah, you can see how thin this is. It's very thin. Um, I think it's pretty amazing. Uh, let me see, do I have something to compare it to? Um, I mean, I have an MX switch somewhere around here, yeah. Here's like a Gateron Black Ink, just for example, just the switch. If I put this at the bottom here, you can see how tall just the switch is. And yeah, the, the chalk spacing is super awesome. I'm really excited to show you like guys like the final um, look of it. It's just, it looks really uniform and small. It's, it's really cool. So here we go, this side, all solid, done. We're good to go. We're gonna lock in this side now. Once again, just gonna line these up and plug in the, the few that were already installed in the plate. Plug that in, plug that in. Let's see, is that one gonna go in nicely? Let's go down here. There we go. Ooh, looks like this one, I can tell, got bent a little bit, so I'm gonna pry this back up and, and get that fixed. <clears throat> so there we go, we can kind of see it got curled over a little bit. Very sad. Sad one. So I'm just going to set this aside and we can use this one instead. Um, one of the nice things is when you buy this kit, you have a few extra switches as well. So you don't have to worry about things like that happening. You can use a different one if you don't want to try to fix that one. And there we go, that one slides in really nice. So you can see, you can see when you see the little two dots, you know that's when it's good. <clears throat> Yep, so there's going to be a bottom plate of sorts. It's a case. It's this 3D printed case. Uh, I spent a long time tuning our 3D printer here to make sure that it looks the best for, for you guys. I mean, obviously the camera isn't picking up every last detail of it, but you can tell this is a pretty clean print. Um, 
We spent a long time working on that to make sure that it was the best. And the bottom is a kind of a rougher texture. Again, I don't know if the camera's gonna pick that up, but. But yeah, it's printed from PLA Pro. It's called, um, which is just a modified PLA. It's a little bit stronger uh, by Polymaker. So they make some pretty great stuff. That's what we're utilizing here. Um, yeah, I'm a pretty big fan of it. One second here. There we go. Okay. <clears throat> Let's go ahead and put in the rest of these now. If I thought about a case of tenting, I've considered it for sure. I'm not much of a person to do tenting, but I know it's something that people definitely like to do. So I'll definitely be looking into, is that something that we can do for, for a case? There's a little stubborn switch right here. <clears throat> there we go. That one in. Pondering about 3D printing a tenting case that can take a huge battery. Yeah, that'd be pretty cool. Um, it's definitely something that could probably be done. Don't know exactly what it would take, but it sounds like something that's definitely possible. go got that one in All right, getting down to it here, just the last few. There 
There we go. Okay. It's got our two sides here. All done and dusted here. So. Pink's all installed. They're all ready to go. These are basically completed halves at this point. Um, so now what we're going to do is grab our case hardware, which comes with your, your case. And inside what you'll find is both your 3M bump ons. See those? And then your case hardware. So what I like to do to install these is first grab some of your hardware, take your case, put the screw through the bottom. So there we go. You can see that's peeking out there. And then you take one of your standoffs. You can see in this case, we have some really short standoffs for, for the corn. That's chalk and you just kind of screw it in. So there we go. We got our first standoff. We're going to go ahead and do that for all the rest of them. In this case, we give you, I believe, 10 standoffs and 21 screws. Again, one extra screw in case you lose it. Stick this through the back. Screw this on. There we go. So we got all those standoffs in. You can see that's nice and steady there. Take your half. Put it in nicely there, drop it in. And now if you take a look, you can see those standoffs peeking through there, 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 and there. So this is the harder part of lining up that screw. So I just try to drop it in the best I can. There we go, get that one dropped in. Take your screwdriver, screw in the first. Again, just lightly, you don't wanna do it too hard just to make sure that we got everything lined up properly. Do your second one. Okay. Yeah, you can see, even though we haven't put it all together, you can see how thin and sleek this case looks. It's pretty sweet. Um, got there, you've got your power and reset button. Right there, you've got your nice nano peeking through, ready to be plugged in. It's all ready to go, basically. Because uh, the chalk spacing is so close, sometimes when you do these screws, you might barely touch the, the um, switch, so don't worry too much about that, but something like that. Um, let's see, do I have my old Lily? Let's see. I have an old Lily that's kind of using MX spacing and um, some other stuff about it. So you can see like here, here's like a Lily 58 using uh, chalk switches as well, but it's a little bit thicker because it's using some like steel plates from little keyboards and stuff. Um, if I measure <clears throat> to the top of the, I guess, let's see, where do I have my, my caliper? Somewhere around here. You can just kind of do this right here. You can see it's 13 millimeters from the back of the case to the top of the switch. Once we put those keycaps on, they'll add a few more millimeters, but that's about what you're dealing with. Um, it's very thin. I think with the bump-ons, it's somewhere around 18, including uh, keycaps. 
And of course, you also have this section, which is a little bit thicker. So once you add that on, it's, it's like just under 19 uh, millimeters, if I remember correctly, across the entire thing. Um, but yeah. But yeah, once it's built, I'll try to do a little bit more of a comparison. But um, the purpose of the diodes, what do they do? So when you do, when you scan a keyboard, let's say you're checking the you basically check rows and columns for what's pressed. So I'm checking this row in this column, and if this is pressed, this row will be lit up and this row will be lit up, right? Now, what if I press um, these three keys right here, just, just as an example, these three keys right here, right? That means that this row is lit up, this row is lit up, this row, this column's lit up, and this column's lit up. So according to that, you would think that all four of these are pressed. But diodes basically allow you, when you only put power into one of them, you don't get crosstalk between the different rows and columns to make sure that you can tell if switches apart when you're scanning. Uh, they make sure that you can have what's called N key rollover. You can press any number of keys and you won't have any trouble with um, not knowing which key is actually pressed in that moment. It's a very simplified, not great explanation of why they're there. Uh, there's some online explanations that go into a little more details about where that ghosting happens and why diodes actually prevent that from preventing power from going backwards, basically, and stuff like that. But that's like a really rough overview is it, of it. So there we go. We got our first case built. It's looking sweet. All that is built. I'll go do this, this side now. So grab our other half right here. Get the screw through. And as I said, we'll just go ahead and... Whoa, where'd that one go? There it is. Screw that on. There we go. That screw is in. Get this one in here. And then this one in here. Okay, cool. Got that one in once again. Just kind of drop this into here. Once again, we can see those screws are lining up in each of those holes here. Oh, that's working great. Um, okay. Screw that one in. So now that we got all that done, we got our two complete halves. They're almost ready to be uh, flashed with firmware and put the um, them through their paces. Um, at this point, you're going to want to put these on, these feet on to the back. Uh, I'm not going to show that on the stream just for today, but it's pretty simple. Peel it off, stick them in each of the corners. I usually like to put one here. Here, 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 and here. <laughs> okay, so let's get the keycaps out. Got these and these. So this little bag right here is your homing keys. These are for your F and J keys, if you're QWERTY. So right here and here. Then you have your thumb keys right here, and then all your other keys here. So you just pop these out and start putting these on. Pretty simple. Got your two prongs, two prongs here, one on the top. 
fly that in. And that's in. That's all you do. This entire thing. Yeah, I've considered switching to Colmac. It's, it's definitely one of those things that is very appealing, but I've never um, put the time into doing Colmac. I did learn it at one point and then I forgot it. Colmac is actually what I learned touch typing on in middle school. And then I went, moved back to QWERTY just naturally. So it's kind of interesting that I originally learned Colmac and now I just don't know it anymore. I was very uh, curious about alternate layouts in that time for some reason. There we go. I'm quitting for life at this point. Yeah, that's fair. Awesome. This is probably the easiest part of this, huh? Sliding some keycaps on. Okay, just gotta do this one. And then our last keycap here. Slide that on. That one all the way on? It's hard to tell. There we go. There we go. So there we go. There's our completed left half. On to the right half. <clears throat> Yeah, some people don't like the cyan, some people really like it. Um, but that's that's that. Uh, there's also, of course, black that we have. We've got a green, uh, magenta, purple is now included. So there'll be more colors to come, but this is always a fun color that I think catches people's eyes, even if they don't really like it personally. see there is our completed keyboard we're all good to go here um, next step is to pull up the um, firmware Uh, I mean, once it's all together, I mean, I, I can try to bend this in f for you, but... I mean, you can see there's a little bit of bend if I really go at it, but I mean, it's not going to flex around very easily because, I mean, you've got... It's already pretty solid for... It's a solid piece of plastic, and then you've got a plate holding it together, too. I mean, it's pretty rigid, but not too rigid. Um... I'm actually going to throw these bump-ons on, I lied. So, when you when you do the bump-ons, just peel these off right here. Slide that onto there. There you go. See, there's one there. I'll just go down the line. Yeah, like the fifth one right here. Okay. 
Ah, way off. we go got all this set up uh, I can just move my mic a little bit so you can hear it now I don't know if this is gonna pick it up I think I might have to turn off the, the noise suppressor Let me see. Also, the compressor might kind of be going crazy on us. It's not the deepest sounding thing, but a lot of that's due to just the pieces themselves. Turn the music off, that also might help. Huh? All right, yeah, so that's that's that keyboard. That sounds. Uh, let me go back to here. Turn this. Okay, there we go. Turned all the settings back on for my mic. Um, okay. So now that we have this all done, the next step of it is obviously to put on the firmware. Um, in terms of how loud it is, uh, let me see. It's definitely louder than a membrane keyboard that you'd have in an office. It definitely depends on your office. I, in my office where, where I'll be working at it, I don't think it'll be a big issue, but um, it's quieter than something like a, um, I don't know, any, any clicky switch from, from, that's an MX variant. It's a little bit higher pitched, but definitely not as loud, I don't think, than other MX linears that I've tried. Um, the other thing that you can obviously do is you can lube shock switches and then become very dampened and quiet, uh, or at least so I'm told. I've never done it personally. I'm not someone who spends long times doing that, but um, this isn't that loud. And I was, I was hitting them pretty hard. Like if you type, I would say more normally, they're pretty quiet. Okay, cool. There's obviously some modifications you can do these switches to make them quieter. I'm not the biggest chalk mod expert expert here, so I don't have a ton to say on it, but there's that. But let's get on to doing the firmware. Um, let me see if I can get this set up right. Uh, okay. Let's see. Did this work? Okay, I need to resize this a little bit. Anyways, okay, so... All right, so when you have your firmware, we have this build guide page that I'm still working on and I'll hopefully have complete soon so that you have the same steps that I've done here in a very concise manner. But when you're doing your firmware, um, for now, I'm just going to use these test files because uh, they're really simple and easy to use. But what you can see here is, or down here, is that if you want to make your own custom key map or do anything else with, with ZMK, we have these two repositories here. 
Um, is the audio echoing? But um, what, you, what you can do with the nice view is you have both the one with the nice views and one without. So this one doesn't have the nice views. This one does have the nice views. Where did I get the one that has the JST and the five ports from nice view? This is um, something that we sell at Type Reactive. It's, um, I can show you it right here. Here, you can see on the build tool, you can find the exact PCB here. So here's that PCB that we're dealing with, the one that we use today. So mm -hmm. there's that. But um, yeah, so we have the firmware that's available that's both uh, no view and the one that has a view. In this case, we're using the one that has the view, so you can fork it. So you can click this button right here and fork it. I've already done that, gone ahead and done that. You can see now it says fork in order to get tree. And then what you can do is go into the actions tab, click I understand my workflows, mm -hmm. go ahead and enable them. And you can go and edit your key map in here in the config corn key map. Go ahead and finish, change any of these at all, however you want. Uh, once you've done that, you can save that and we'll start a build. I'm going to start one uh, manually, or I guess I don't need to start one yet manually, but it'll start to build it and then you'll be able to find it in a tab like this where you'll see um, a list of this, this firmware download. And when you download this, it gives you a zip that you can down, uh, that you can open up and get your two files. In this case, I'm just going to download these two to test it. So my left half and my right half. You can see they're right here. Uh, now what I'm going to do is uh, plug in this left half and then put in the left firmware. So I'll just do this on my side. Got my cable right here. I'll plug this in. See the screen kind of goes crazy. Um, the nice nano shows up as a drive on your screen. Um, you can't see it here, but it's basically just like a USB drive. And then I just drag over the left half um, onto the uh, nice nano here. Give it a second to copy over. Okay, it's done. And then you can see right there, we've already got that all connected. I'm going to unplug this. It's going to die because I don't have the batteries on. Going ahead and go over to the right side. Give it a second here. Um, then put the right onto that side. Once that's done copying over, you can see it hooks up to there. I can unplug this. Power it on. The battery switch over here. There you go. You can see it's all connected to the left half right here. And we can see on the left half we have this um, settings wheel. That means that it's setting up and it's waiting to pair with the computer. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead onto my computer, go to my settings, go to my Bluetooth. And I'm just going to pair with this corn. <clears throat> there it shows up. I hit connect. Give it a second. I have to try to have it connect a couple times. You can see there it's all connected now. Uh, And it's all typing, so we're all good. I'm typing everything, blah, 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 blah. It's all working. There we go. Oh, the keyboard's fully complete. You can see there's the words printed up there. That's everything. Cool. So there we go, we got a complete, fully built corn. Um, there's the firmware, everything like that. Uh, I think that's just about everything for this build. Um, if there's any other questions, I'm happy to answer them now. Otherwise, I think that's about it for the stream.
Yeah, I'll go ahead and take a look at that message later. Um, hope it was cool for you guys to see this keyboard all in action and it working. Um, I'm really proud of this whole setup that we've got here, so I think it looks pretty great. I'll try to condense all this information to that simple build guide on our doc site. And other than that, I just kind of wanted to show this off to everyone. So uh, thanks for watching. Hope you guys have a great rest of your day. And uh, yeah, hopefully a Lily 58 in the future. So have a great rest of your guys' day, and I'll see you later.